بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام وصلى الله على سيد الله مسلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لحظة أبدا على نعم الله وأفضاله اللهم آتنا من لدنك رحمة وعلمنا من لدنك علم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوعنا تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف الناجيك يا رحم الراحم اللهم إنا نسلك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفزه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت إحتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أكرم بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقالد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه رجل الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقد من لساني يفقه قولي وسد لساني وهدي قلبي وافعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا مت... وزنا كمال المتفتوع العارفين والفق في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص السكر اليقين والعافية والغنى والناس أروى حفظ والنفع والانتفاء وأخرى تدارين وعلم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah um, Setting our class, Alhamdulillah um, So we continue with the book, Bismillah We are now at the Furudu Salah And we are at the obligations of the prayer May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Increase us in our prayers And increase us in the quality of our prayers Inshallah And write us, the, write us down as those who die uh, Amongst the believers who are always in prayer in, 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 the, in the state of prayer in the state of awareness and presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillah okay, now, right, So the last time round we were um, at Surah Fatiha right, So today we're going to go on into the, uh, into the Ruku'ah right, So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Furudu salah al-Niyah wa takbiratu al-Ihram ma'a al-Niyah Muqiraatu al-Fatiha bil-Basmalati wa tashdidati al-Arba'i asharata wa ikhraj al-Dad min al-Dha' wa laysa fi al-Fatiha al-Dha' ثم الركوع ويجب أن ينحني بحيث يتنال راحته ركبتيه و... ويطمئن فيه وجوبا حتى تسكن أعضاؤه ثم اعتدال 
wa yatma'innu fihi wujuban thumma sujudu marratain wal julusu bayna sajdatain wa yatma'innu wujuban fil fil kulli wa yaf'alu baqiyan rak'at kadhalik wa tashahhud wa tashahhud al awwal wa qu'uduhu sunna wa tashahhud al akhir wal julusu fihi fard wa salatu ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'da atashahudi wa qabla salam fard wa salamu min salati fard tamam ok so we at so we are at ruku' now right so he says here and then ruku' and what is ruku' and ruku' it is wa yajibu an yanhaniya bihaythu tanalu rahatahu rukbatayhi Right, so it is in ruku'. It is that he must lean forward. It means he must bend forward, so as to be able to rest his hands on his knees, so as to be able to. Right, so um, it is sunnah for him to place his hands on his knees, but it is not wajib. Right, so the minimum ruku' right is that you must bend enough such that you are able to um reach your knees. Right, so for ruku'. Okay. Uh, bend, right? Till bend such that, right? Such that able to reach knees. Okay. That is that. Um. That is the hukum of ruku. Right. So if a person is uh bends too, um, like not 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 enough. No, that's not bend enough. Right, so then for this person, uh, his uh, for this person, right, his rukur is not valid. Right, so let me just draw a few uh, examples eh, of rukur that is uh, correct, then rukur that is uh, haram to do, in fact, and rukur that is makro to do. Okay, so the first type of rukur, right, is that. So for as long as, for as long as the person, so today is the person uh, praying, right, and then the back of the person. Right is so. If let's say a person were to bend, right like this, and the head of the person is here, correct? Right. So the knees of the person is here. Okay, the knees are here. Right. So for as long as the hands are able to reach the knees, and right, for as long as the hands are able to reach the knees, the rukur is valid. Right. The hands actually reaching the knees and touching the knees or grasping the knees is all sunnah. Right. It is not wajib for a person to do so. Right, so this is the minimum, lah. Right, so if let's say somebody is carrying their child, or they are, you know, they're unable to reach downwards towards their knees, right? As long as they they bend enough that they know, if they were to reach their knees, they would have they would be able to touch their knees. Of course, the optimum rukur, right? The optimum rukur is to bend all the way such that you straighten your back. Right, the ruku of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was such that the Sahaba described him that he that they could pour water on his back and the water would not flow off. Right, they they could pour water on his back and the water would not flow off. There was how straight uh, his back was. Right, so the ruku this this is a um, so this is valid. Right, valid. Sah, sah. This one is optimum. Right, the best form optimum. Right, the best form of rukuk is to do it this way, right, whereby it is a 90 degree uh, angle right, on a person. Okay, haram rukuk, uh, haram eh, haram. So someone who does it this way, uh, they are sinful, right, to do it that way. So haram rukuk is when the 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 face faces up, right, and the chest is upwards like that. Okay, the chest is facing the qibla, and the face is facing the qibla. Right, this is haram. It's haram to do. That means they, they, they stick out the chest. They stick out the chest like that, right? That is haram to do. Right? That will also lead them to like uh, so. So this kind of this kind of ruku uh, is haram. Okay. So someone cannot do it this way. Um, uh, macro ruku. Which I will do it in what color? Let me put it in blue lah. Okay. Macro ruku. Right? Is when a person uh were to bend their body like this. Uh, they curve their bodies too much, right? Uh, they curve their bodies too much. They, they, they go on on an arc, right? So that this is macro, macro. Okay, it's a macro. It's macro. It's macro. Right to bend the body in that way. The knees should be straight, 
right? Straighten their knees. So some people they, they rukuk, they bend their knees like that. Uh, don't bend their knees. Say straighten their knees. Okay. So in, it's okay lah. <laughs> simple lah, rukuk. <laughs> right. So the conditions of rukuk, right, is just that the palm, palms of the hand, the hands must be able to touch the knees, must be able to touch the knees, and then it's sunnah to actually touch the knees. I to show that you can, um, you know, uh, you can bow in that way. Right. And then of the of the other additional sunnahs of rukuk. Right, is that if this is the front view eh, of your knees, that is someone's feet, someone's legs, eh? Right, front view of their legs, okay. That they grasp, they put their they put their hands on their legs and they grasp. Okay, they grasp the legs. The knees, eh, you grasp. So you don't put your hands flat like that, you grasp. Okay, you grasp uh the knees. Sunnah. Okay, sunnah to uh, grasp the knees. Alright. Um, and then again, as we learn the sunnah of prayer, to begin the takbir at the point of moving, right, towards the ruku, and then to raise the hands as well. Okay, Allahu Akbar, I move towards ruku. As you come up, say, Ya Allah, Hamida, to raise the hands as well. All sunnah, right, of uh, ruku. Tamam. Okay, so, uh, Allahumma sadi ala sadina Muhammad. Okay, so for for so for ruku, right? Ruku by the language by by lukatan, by the language it means to bend by the Sharia. It means to bend such that your palms can reach your knees. Okay, so the definition is there in the book anyway, right? So it, um, so for ruku, linguistically means it, it means to lean forward or to bend, right? This is the linguistic meaning. Okay, the linguistic meaning of ruku is to lean forward or to bend. Right, the Sharia meaning of ruku, put it in green. The Sharia meaning of ruku is the entire thing to lean forward so as to be able to rest the hands on the knees. This is the Sharia meaning right, of ruku. It's the Sharia definition of ruku. Okay, ruku is only ruku is valid only if the previous uh, rukun was valid. As we know, right throughout the solat. A tartib is important. Eh? Tartib is wajib. Right? So to be in order is wajib. So what is the meaning of in order? It means that if what happened, what, what was done previously was not valid, then what will come after is not valid. Right? Every movement in the prayer is only valid by what was done previously. Okay, that what was done previously was valid. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so if there's no other questions on Ruku, uh, any, any, any questions on Ruku or not? Mm. Okay, there are no questions on ruku. Right then, the next thing that he mentions here is to maknina. And what to maknina? Uh, uh, Allah Muhammad. Uh, uh, what to maknina? Uh, what to what what to what to ma inna fihi wujuban hatta taskuna a'ala uhu thumma thumma atidal. As to maknina in ruku is wajib. As we know, in every movement of the prayer, to maknina is wajib. They only mention to maknina here in ruku and not in standing, because in standing you already had the fatiha, I had to force the to maknina. I had to do the fatiha. You have to have stood, you know, at least for a moment, right? But the thing about ruku is that the dhikr that you do in ruku is not wajib. I had to say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim, Yu Abi Hamdi, is not wajib. It is sunnah. Right, so it's possible that the person were to leave it out and right, not to say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim Yu Abi Hamdi. Right, but at least they must be a, they must have held the ruku' for a moment. Right, they must have held the ruku' for a moment. And that's the meaning of tumanina. Tumanina basically means that the entire body rests in position. Right, all of the limbs rest in position. They don't move. Uh, while you're having tumaknina, let me go to the next slide. Eh, uh, to just get the 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 tumaknina. Um, son. Alright, so that is ruko. Then the next one is let me just clear this one. Alright, so the next one is watma anna fihi wujuban hatta taskuna a'ala uhu. Okay, then making necessary pause or tumaknina so that all limbs come to rest. Alright, so what is the definition of tumaknina? Right, so tumaknina is basically in the prayer. It is wajib, and we know it's wajib from a, from a from a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whereby a man came to the masjid. It's a famous hadith, mashallah. The man came to the masjid and he prayed. Right, then he approached the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after praying, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Go, go back and pray, for you have not prayed." So the man went back and he went to pray again, and he came back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
And the Rasulullah said to him, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed. Then the man went back again and prayed again. Then came the Rasulullah and the Rasulullah said to him, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed. And then the man said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't know more than what I do. You know, I just, all I know is what I do. <laughs> so please teach me what's wrong. And what's wrong with my, so what's wrong with my prayer. So um, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the man, When you pray, and when you pray uh, and you move in your prayers, when you do your ruku, stay in that position until your limbs are rested. Right? And then when you stand back up, stay in position until your limbs are rested. Then when you go into sujood, stay in position until your re- your limbs are rested. And from this hadith, we know of the compulsion of Tumatnina. Uh, it is compulsory to have tumatnina in every movement in the prayer, right? So tumatnina, any tumatnina, it is the um, it is the, uh, the, the, the the pause between the movements in the in prayer that is to the length of time, right? That it takes to say Subhanallah, right? And it's compulsory in four of the movements in the in the prayer, which is ruku and i'tidal and sujud and the sitting between the two sujuds, right? So that is the um, definition of tumatnina. What is tumatnina? Tumatnina, right? It is. It is the pause, right? or it is the compulsory pause. Pause between movements in the prayer um, that is to the length of time it takes to say Subhanallah. Okay, that's to manina. Right, so moments lah, a moment. Right, so you say it is a momentary pause. Right, a moment. Right, such that all the limbs are in place right, and it is compulsory for four of the um, obligations right, which means rukun of prayer which are uh, rukun i'tidal Uh, sujud right, twice and sitting between the two sujuds okay that is tumatnina right so if someone and tumatnina must 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 be done with yaqeen okay tumatnina must be performed with certainty yakin okay it must be performed with certainty meaning yakin right so it uh, Allahumma sadi ala sadina Muhammad um, right so it uh, uh, so if someone were to perform any of these actions ruku' or itidal or sujud or sitting between two sujuds to a level whereby they are not um, they're not yakin then they have to have yaqeen or certainty that they have done so, then they must return to it and do it. Right? So if someone, for example, they did rukur, then they entered us, Samia Allah, Holy Man, Hamid, they, st- they stood up and they quickly went back down. Right? So there was no pause in their standing before they sujud. Uh, they just went up and they went back down all the way. There was no pause in their standing before sujud. Right? Then um, then when they're in the sujud, they, they, they begin to doubt themselves. And they say that, did I, did I actually hold my, my i'tidal for subhanallah? You know, they, 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 they know they didn't, they didn't recite anything at all. They just stood and then, and then they went back down to sujud. So they doubted, did I hold my, my, my standing to the level of subhanallah or not? And the moment that they are not yakin and they have no certainty, they must immediately go back to that position and then to perform it with the manina and then come back down into sujud. And they must backtrack lah. They must backtrack in their in their in their solat. Okay. So of course, alhamdulillah, the sunnah recitations that Rasulullah SAW has placed for us for each one of these um, movements, it helps us or it forces us into tumatnina. Right? So, so for as long as you recite the sunnah recitations, then confirm you are already in tumatnina. Right? There is no 
um, yeah, yeah, you 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 are definitely into what Nina because you have recited something, right? While you are, uh, you have because you have recited something while you were in that position. So definitely you held it for longer than uh, Subhanallah. Eh? But definitely you held it more, longer than Subhanallah. Okay, um, nah. Okay, so here, uh, okay, so what? So to to what Nina, the next one is a uh, sujud by uh, uh, it is i'tidal. Right, so so that is ruku' then it is i'tidal. So why is i'tidal? So he says here, right, uh, thumma uh, wa yathma innu uh, thumma thumma al i'tidal wa yathma innu fihi wujuban. Right, so then i'tidal and what is i'tidal by the language and what is i'tidal by the sharia? So the word i'tidal. Yeah, right, So atidal by the language, right? It means atidal by the language. It means uh, to be upright. Okay, atidal means to be upright. Okay, so by the Sharia, right? It means to be upright. Uh, for the Sharia, it means for the person praying to go back into standing position for the person back into standing position um, uh, that he was on before he uh, bent to do ruku I had to go back to what he was on I had for, it, for him to go back to what he was on uh, before he bent to do ruku ok the standing position uh, into um that uh, Back into what he was on, what? Okay, what he was on before he bent to the ruko, to go back into what he was on, because not everybody will be standing. And right? so some people will be sitting, some people will be bent over. Right? So depending on what they were on, right? So that is iratidal. So whatever, however they perform their standing, right? That is the. Um. Uh, that is what they're going to go back to after their ruko. Right? So ruko. Go back into standing. So if they were standing straight up, then they must go back into standing straight up. If they were bent um, and they were unable to stand straight up, then they go back into their bending uh, position. If they were seated, right, seated, and they go back into their sitting position. Okay, so that is um, that is atidal after rukur. Right, so inshallah, most of, the, most of these things we've gone through already. Right, so I'm going to go into quickly lah, um, through this, um, and then uh, sujud. Okay, so for atidal, uh, just to ensure, and uh, for atidal, ensure that the backbone is straight. Okay, let's ensure. Okay, for those who are able to lah, right? So ensure, right? Uh, backbone is as straight as possible. Okay, so so you stand up straight, and uh, backbone so not not bend forward, nothing. Backbone as straight as possible. Um, hands by the side. I actually don't fold the hands, but the hands are by the side of the person's uh, body. Um, uh, uh, be careful not to swing the hands. The hands, as this, will nullify the solid. Okay? Right, so be careful as not to no, not not to swing your hands as you will nullify your solat. Right, and we know there are many there are there are, there is a lot of recitations to recite when it comes to atidal. Right, the minimum of which is semi Allah liman hamida Rabbana wa lakal hamd or Rabbana lakal hamd. Okay, if you want to increase hamd and kathir and tayyib and barak and fee, mid us samawati, mid al arim and mashita, min shayin ba'da. Right, and then if you want to go a little a little a little. Allah Muhammad. Right, if you want to go into the uh, du'as after, right, even after uh, uh, um, that also can. Right, but at the same, by the same time, if you are praying in jama'ah, right, then if you're the imam, then for the imam to get the permission of the ma'mum to do longer du'as. Right? So, uh, but all of it has to come from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so, um, so there is i'tidal. Then now, uh, into ruku. Okay, for all the movements in the prayer of the conditions of the of all the movements is that you must intend the move the movement. 
right the movement must be intended right so like for example meaning, meaning you don't have to say that you no know, oh i am doing itadal or i am doing sujud no but but when you move that is what you you're moving for right so if someone were to move and it was not what they were intending so for example if someone is doing ruku right and then they lifted their head um you know because they you know uh uh because they felt for example because they felt the hijab of uh sliding down eh, for example la uh, and they go into ruku and they felt the hijab flying down right sl- or sliding down and so they lifted their head to try and stop it from from coming down right so then the lifting of the head is not for i'tidal uh, but it's for uh the hijab right or if they, if they were doing doing their ruku right and then they want to see something so they lifted their head to go and see right something that's in front of them like they they have lifted their head not for um uh not for atidal but for something else and so that is 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 all in a lot rare occasions say eh, where you do that something your prayer um that is not for the prayer but is for something else right so if that were to ever happen so that for example if somebody is praying you know and then and then they are in ruku and then they, and because being in ruku they are out of view and they are out of view of, of certain people um uh somewhere else like where for example so they come up into antidal so as to be within view so people know that they are there and right? so then the intention is not for antidal the intention is for people to see that they are there and another example would be like for someone who's standing then they go into sujood right uh to hide <laughs> like for example because they want to hide from someone so they're praying and then someone's coming and then they want to hide and they go into sujood um so as to hide from the person right so of course that one is um uh if that ever happens lah eh, to anybody <laughs> right that would be um not valid the sujood is not valid they must go back to their atidal and they must redo the sujood right so but of course most of us you know when we pray we we intend our movements right you, when you when you move that's what you you intend to do you intend to do the movements of prayer and you're not intending you know to avoid something or to show something or to um duck from from some sort of um uh, ball or something like that <laughs> or or you, you got up because you felt something on the floor right so usually usually is is not that lah usually our prayer is okay Okay, now, alright. So that is um from Iyadidan. So now going into sujud, right? So for sujud, uh, ويا فعل بق مسلم محمد ثم ثم السجود مرتين والجلوس بين سجدتين ويطمع إن وجوبا في كل right. So and then to perform the sujud twice, right? To perform the sujud twice and to have to magnina in um in and to have to magnina. In the sujud, right? So here, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Um, sujud happens on seven limbs, as you mentioned before. I right? said so sujud. I right? sujud must sujud happens or must happen right? on seven parts of the body. Right? As in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that um, I have been commanded to sujud on seven. Parts of the body. What are they? The first one is the forehead. Okay, the forehead is compulsory. The nose is sunnah. All right. Um, two and three will be the palms of the hands. Okay. Number four and five will be knees. Right, and number six and seven will be um, bottom of the uh, toes. Okay, the bottom of the toes. So not exactly bottom of your feet, but bottom of your toes. All right. Okay. So and the only one that needs to be um, uh, the skin that needs to touch the ground is the forehead. Okay, only only the forehead, right? Uh, skin, skin to ground. Okay, only forehead, skin to ground. Everything else, if it's covered, so even if you, even if you pray with gloves on, right? Of course, of course, for women, our our knees and our toes should be covered, lah, right? But even if you wear like this kind of kain, eh, you wear kain, and then the kain, um, or, or this kind of um. Terakung, right? Terakung, the 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 prayer garment, and then the kain is or the the what is kain in English? Yeah, skirt, eh? The skirt, the long skirt, like is um it, it hits the ground, right? And then your toes are on the ground, okay? Um, yeah, lah. Of course, it's it's all valid, lah. 
it's all valid right so it, um as long as these are on the ground at the same time right these things need to be on the ground at the same time right so if let's say somebody were to perform sujoid right and then one of their hands like like that is placed behind their back to hold their hijab now I've seen that that, that happen in the masjid eh? someone sujoid on one hand on the ground two knees two feet on the ground and then the foot on the ground but their hand is on their back because they're holding their hijab and they're trying to hold their hijab to prevent the hijab from flipping over uh, or from, from, from sliding down so they actually use their hands to hold their hijab <laughs> you cannot do that inshallah can do that I mean the best you can do is for example lamb, you know if you say you, you don't have a have the telecom gun and you only have a hijab and you want to play in your hijab right you can take your hijab from the back if it's long enough if it's long enough and 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 put it between your armpits. Uh, you can do this. Uh, so you can you can take your hijab and you can like um clip it. And uh, you can clip it or slip it uh, in between your armpits uh, and then you sujod in that way possible. Uh, the one is that is valid. The one is valid. Uh, so you prevent your hijab from falling down now uh, if you have no pin or something and nothing else to wear, you only have one hijab on your head uh, and you have to pray you have to necessarily pray in that particular hijab. Right? So you, you take the, the back of the hijab and you clip it. Uh, you 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 would um you clip it right uh between uh, in your armpits right so when you sujod it will not slide down uh your back right if that's happening but but don't but don't use your hand and hold the hijab I have also seen people who would, um in in tarawih they want to they want to read the Quran from the mushaf right while the imam is doing the the juz right they want to follow the imam so they hold the the mushaf you know in their hands then when they go down to sujood they don't know what to do with the mushaf right so then you can't put the mushaf on the floor because you're holding a mushaf right right so when they go into sujood they hold the mushaf up and then they sujood on one hand okay that one but the sujood is not the sujood is not uh valid that's all right it's not the sujood is not valid right? some of them they sujood on the back of their hands like that right so not valid also right on the back of the hands right but to actually if they want if you really want to hold the mushaf <laughs> right if you can uh place it on your lap in such a way that it will not slide down you can place it on your lap right or place it on put it in a small enough mushaf put it between your fingers and then have at least your thumb on the ground right the the, the palm of the hand eh, the palm of the hand it right? has to be on the ground Okay, so any part, not not the entire palm, but any part, even with one finger, right, or one tiny finger, the pinky finger, and the rest of the hand, you hold up the mushaf. But then again, it, it gets gets very um can get very complicated to try and do that. Again, right, so the best thing to do is not to hold a mushaf, but to hold a phone. I right, hold a phone. Um, you can disable the internet right, so that nobody can disturb you while you're praying. Right, and then um read the Quran of all the Imam in the Quran from the Quran app in your phone. Uh, whatever Quran app you have in your phone, follow from there. Why? Because when you blank out the page or you, you blank out the screen, it's no longer counted as a mushaf. It's not a mushaf. And so when you blank out your phone screen to black and you put it on the floor, it's okay. It's not counted as a mushaf. But when you on the screen back, it becomes a mushaf again. Uh, okay, so easier lah. You know, just do it that way. Just do it that way. Like right, instead of holding, instead of holding a mushaf, mushaf, you know, in your hands, unless you have like a, you put a bag by the side of you or a table, then you can put the mushaf on the bag or on the table, and then you can pick it up again when you want to go up into standing, right? Uh, after that or into sitting after that. I just be very careful about that. Eh? Right, so for uh, sujud must happen at the same time on seven limbs. The forehead is the only one where the skin must touch the ground, right? and you must lean your weights on your forehead. Right, so wajib to lean the weights on the forehead. So if somebody sujoots, right, and they put their hand on the ground, and they put their weights on their hands, right, on their hands, or they, and uh, uh, of course there's a bit on your hands, of course, right? but they put weight on their hands so much that the forehead just grazes the ground. Right, it's not actually rested on the ground; it's grazing the ground. Right, and this might happen to someone who's praying in the open or you know outdoors, whereby the floor is dirty. Right, the floor is dirty, but it's not nice; it's dirty. Right, or the floor is gravel, right, or sand. So painful, lah, to put the forehead on the floor, right, because of the sand and the gravel. So they might have, they might be resting their body weight on their hands entirely. 
no right there it is compulsory why in in sujud to have your forehead rest on the ground so some of your weight must be on your forehead i right? such that if you were to sujud on a carpet like a soft fluffy carpet you should be able to see an indentation on the carpet and you should be able to see that it has been indented and because you have uh, performed your sujud there i said there's some 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 of your weight on your forehead okay so the forehead right uh skin to ground and just put it next to here also um uh some of right, must uh, must lean on the forehead i right, must lean on the forehead right so you must be leaning in Right, on the forehead if all of this is not done then the sujud is not valid sujud is not valid okay so it says here um allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad ay ala al a'da sab'a wa hiya al jabha wal batn al kafayn wa rukbatayn wa juz min butun asabi' al qadamayn eh wa juz wa juz wa juz min min butun asabi' al qadamayn and the last one is the bottom of the toes right um any part of it any part of it of course you should not to have all of them but if let's say you only have one toe only one toe um the bottom of the toe is on the ground is valid is valid eh is your sujud and if let's say for example someone is unable to sujud properly in that way i right, so they are seated on the ground right they are in the um and and uh, allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad how would this be eh? <laughs> if let's say they are unable they are unable to go down into sujood such that they put their feet propped up for some reason lah maybe their knees their knees are injured i right, possible eh so knees are injured um they can't put weight on the knees right on knees are, are there's, there's a big um like like burn on both knees for example it's possible right they have big burns on both knees they cannot put weight on their knees right so and they but they would they want to sujood forward right so in this case if they are able to sujood right without having their knees touched the it's difficult so lah you do just sit down you won't even go down right just sit <laughs> you won't even try to go down and put your forehead on the on the ground because i have had um uh, a student uh, her knees what she she sprain her knee So in spraining her knee, there's a huge bandage over the knee. Um, she can't sujud on that particular knee, uh, because of the bandage. Right. So of course for that person, um, if they can sujud while lifting the knee, if the knee can be lifted, right, or put a soft pillow under the knee. Right. So again, we go back to our principle in fiqh, right, to always do the best of your ability. Right. So if she can put a soft pillow under the knee, right, to help her in the sujud. Right, and it's on one knee, two hands, one forehead, and then the two feet. Right. Um, if really cannot do that, then you can just lift the knee, but can have the feet still touch the ground. Whatever a person is able to do, lah. And right? whatever a person is able to do, right, in regards to that. Right? But, but but they have to make sure that the toes, any part of it, the bottom of the toes, eh, must be on the ground. So if somebody were to do their sujood, right, let me just draw a few examples. If somebody were to do their sujood like this, you know, with their with their this is their feet, the knees are here, and right? their feet are up, and then, okay, so this, this is the one of course wrong lah, right, whereby the feet is backwards. Okay, so they 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 doing their sujud, right like this. Okay, their feet backwards. So of course the bottom of the feet is not touching the ground, right? This uh, this is is wrong lah. Okay, some people right they sujud they put their fingernails or their toenails, right on the ground. <laughs> right, so instead of instead of um, yeah, instead of instead of bending the toes forward to ensure the bottom of the toes. That like, you know how they they just they just um, this is a bad drawing. Nicer. Okay, you know how they they you know the feet, right? They just put the very edge of the feet on the ground for some reason, and they put the like like you know how ballerinas do that. They put the very edge of the feet on the ground. I so this also not not correct. Right, you need to bend the toe forward. Okay, the toe has to be bent forward. Ah, uh, this is correct. Okay, the toes has to be bent forward, so not like on the edge, right? Because the button is the is here. This is the button, 
Right, so not on the on the very edge of your toe. Okay, just bend the toes lah. <laughs> Inshallah. If someone has um sprained their toes, if someone sprained their toes and they can't bend their toes forward, then if there's any toe that can be bent forward, any toe at all, any toe, <laughs> right, they can be bent forward, then use that toe to bend forward. So any part, eh, any part of the uh, of the foot. Okay, uh, so question here, a few questions actually. Um, if we step on our telekong for the whole prayer so the feet never touch the ground the whole time is it valid? yes it's valid it's the same thing as for example wearing socks right so wearing socks is valid right so the only place of your body that must touch the ground um, at any point I mean uh, for, uh, for, the, for the entire prayer for the entire prayer the only part of your body that must touch the ground um, skin to ground is your forehead at the point of sujud it's the only part in the entire solid. No other part is compulsory to touch the ground, skin to ground. Um, if someone said I had a bad fall in the end, when I sujured, I can't put pressure on my left knee because of the wound. So I didn't put the left knee completely on the ground. So when I sujured from sleep position, um, so, so of course, because it is under, this, this is not, your solid, your solid is not nullified, but you are under, um, it is considered as you are um, not well, uh, under the condition of not being well. So you're not well. And uh, so it is. Um, so you sujud as to however you're able to sujud. However you're able to sujud, you sujud in that way. And then, then um, inshallah, the prayer is uh, is is valid. And the prayer is valid. Um. Okay, okay. The question on okay, if okay, why the sujud not valid? If the, the hands are up. If the palms are sunnah, the sun the sunnah is for the skin of the palm to touch the ground, but the hand on the ground is wajib. Uh, the sunnah is the skin that is correct, right? So, uh, for for it's what is correct, right? So for the one, so, so it's wajib. So this this seven parts that I wrote down here again, these seven body parts on the ground. We're saying these body parts, the the body parts itself. It has to be resting on the ground. Whether or not there is a cover, right, that is a different thing. Right? But the hands must be on the ground. So even if you're wearing gloves, doesn't matter. The hands must be on the ground. The knees must be on the ground. The bottom of the feet must be on the ground. And the forehead must be on the ground all at the same time. Okay, there has to be a tumaknina moments in your sujud whereby all seven must be on the ground. Right, and the only one that needs to be um, exposed to the ground, I mean the skin exposed to the ground, is the forehead. Okay, but the rest of them must be on the ground. Right, so if let's say um, like someone uh, were to come down to sujud, and as they come down, their hand you know holds back their hijab, you know, or the hand or the hand you know holds up a mushaf, or the hand um, you know pulls their their skirt, you know, the skirt is pulling up. This they pull it back down. For example, you know, if someone is doing that, right, while they're praying. Um, they have to bring the hand back to position and place it there for at least a level of tumak nina. Okay, at least a level of tumak nina. Right, so if someone is, um, yeah lah, I mean, whatever they're doing, like carrying this, carrying that, right, they need to they need to ensure that all seven must be on the ground at any one time um, for tumak nina. So another question here. So I hope I, under, I, I, I explained eh? uh properly is understood. What if I'm trying? Mm, so the sunnah about the worst, uh, the um the nose touching is sunnah. Okay. So when when you when when you when you sujud right, I hope I'm not confusing anybody. When you sujud right, this is your face. Okay. This is your nose. Correct. Okay. The part that is wajib to touch the floor by its skin is the forehead. Alright? The nose is sunnah to touch the floor. Let me use blue. Okay, it's sunnah to touch the nose onto the floor. Sunnah. Right, but the forehead is the one that is wajib. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so, so nose, nose is sunnah. Alright, so you can very well sujot on just the forehead without the nose. It's possible. Alright, so it, uh seven, so seven, <laughs> because see forehead, right? Two hands, two ni- two knees, two feet. Seven, right? <laughs> right? Forehead, right? So nose, ah uh, yeah, <laughs> nose and forehead is counted as one. I count as one. Right, so any part of your forehead. So if someone has like a a a bandage here, they can they can actually sujud here. 
uh, they can try and like get a forehead in <laughs> like, anywhere on your forehead <laughs> like can uh, is counted okay and what is the forehead the forehead is basically between the hair growth and the eyebrows right so any part in this area where your hair grows and your eyebrows is your forehead the whole thing is your forehead right so if you have um like injury or whatever then you can just try and aim la <laughs> aim some some forehead somehow or other okay all right so you must fulfill the above obligations uh in each rakaan okay alhamdulillah uh okay uh, from sujood okay, actually i have not finished sujood yet sujood that's, that's the definition of sujood Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kedam So Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Alright so Allah sabal a'ada And you mentioned There was the seven um, The seven uh, body parts Was sujood Lughatan al-khudu' Wa tazallul Wa shara'an Wadi' al-musalli Jabahatahu Ala ma yusalli Alayhi min ardin Aw ghayriha Naam Okay so uh, Fi kulli raka'an Okay so uh, Sujood is the next slide they have to put on sujud? No. Okay. That is tapi here. Okay. First of all, so just I always finish sujud for this lesson, right? So for sujud, um, lugatane eh, by language, sujud by the language. Okay. Um, by the language it means to, uh, to um to 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 humble, right? To humble oneself. That's the definition of sujud in the language. To humble oneself, right, in the sharia, right, for the person praying to place his forehead on the ground that he is praying on. That's the definition, eh? Right, together with the other six, uh, together with the other six limbs. With the other six limbs. Okay, ma'am. Alright. Okay. Okay, so if we are finished. Okay, when if we are finished, I will share the sunnah of prayers. Okay. Alright, so alhamdulillah, so everyone's okay. Let's write it down. Share. Alright, the sunnahs related to Sujud Sahwi. Or oh, do you all need that? That's that. That's like. Do you all need that slide still? Or oh, that okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. The sunnahs related to Sujud Sahwi. So we're going to our five hundred sunnahs of the prayer. So inshallah, trying our best to implement the five hundred sunnahs of the prayer. So the first one, sunnahs related to Sujud Sahwi. Sujud Sahwi is done when one of the requirements of the prayer is left out. Or when something impermissible is done, and we've gone through a little bit. I think so, right? We've gone through a little bit of when Sujud Sahwi is done, but even even so, it will be go, it will go through again later on. Alright, so Sujud Sahwi, when one of the, one of the requirements is left out, or something impermissible then or a Sunnah of the student Abad of the Abad Sunnah, the specific Sunnahs, right, they will require for Sujud Sahwi to be done, and again Sujud Sahwi is a Sunnah thing to do. So if you're not sure if you're not sure if you should do Sujud Sahwi or not, then don't do. Right? If there's a rule of thumb. If you're not so sure, don't do it because you might be unknowingly nullifying your own prayer. Okay? So if you're not sure if what the mistake you did it requires Sujud Sahwi or not, um, then don't do Sujud Sahwi. Okay. So Sujud Sahwi is done after reading the Shahkot and before giving salams, before you end the prayer. Um, so, so after you finish the prayer, you sujud. So, if you want to do sujud sahwi, you intend first. I'm doing sujud sahwi. Then you sujud. Allah Akbar sujud. Uh, you read the, the the recitations of sujud sahwi. Then you come back up. Then you sujud again. Then you come back up. Okay, and then you salam straight away. So, so every sujud sahwi is two sujuds, right? And it's not that every mistake you do two sujuds, you know. But but all together, if you had several mistakes in your prayer. Right, all together you do two sujuds or sujud sahwi. Inshallah, we'll go through more of sujud sahwi uh, in this book. Uh, inshallah, among the reasons that sujud sahwi is required to be done is, for example, doing an action that nullifies the prayer when done intentionally, but does not nullify the prayer when done unintentionally due to forgetfulness. 
right so for example eating during the prayer right so if you intentionally eat in nullifies your prayer right but if you unintentionally eat and again eating what is minimal right no more than it than it's than, than it's a sesame seed right so if you unintentionally swallow something and it's already in your mouth and this thing is smaller than a sesame seed right or a black seed um then your prayer is not nullified if you had swallowed it unintentionally but if you swallow it intentionally you will have nullified your prayer okay um yeah this will require for sujud sahwi uh, another thing will be speaking in the prayer so if you unintentionally spoke in your prayer your prayer is not nullified right but if you intentionally spoke in your prayer then your prayer is nullified right so for example someone who thought that he has finished the prayer um and then he said assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah but he's actually not finished the prayer right so for example someone who's praying zuhur and only prayed three rakats and then salam on the third rakat Right, and then someone next to him said that oh you're not done yet right? you only done three rakats you were masbuk you came in to the prayer right you came in came in halfway one more rakat for you right so his, his salams is counted as forgetful speech okay is considered as forgetful speech so him doing the salams like that assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah is him doing something that is forgetful right so um it doesn't nullify his prayer but he can do so with the on uh, because had he done it on purpose it would have nullified his prayer Okay, had he done it on purpose, it would have nullified his prayer. That's the first thing. So, what would would result for sujud sahwi to do something that would nullify it intentionally, but forgetfully it would not nullify it. So you have done it. You have done it forgetfully, and you did it forgetfully. It didn't nullify your prayer, but you can do sujud sahwi on accounts for it. All right. Second one, leaving out an action that is sunnah abad, right? Abad um uh of the solah. Uh, or part of or, or part of a part of sunnah abad i ba'du min al abad i even when done intentionally right so inshallah i think i'll go through this next week lah because there's a lot of things to actually um, go through about sujud sahwi and i don't think i went through sujud sahwi the previous book no in this book right so for for those of you who have never learned sujud sahwi it'll be the first time if you have learned it before in other classes then then it'll be a revision lah okay so inshallah next week i will i will i will um Uh, go through right the part on sujud sahwi there's some questions here uh all right there was one time the imam sujud sahwi one time only eh what did the imam do he sujud sahwi one time and after salam he repeated he remembered and he sujud two times again <laughs> okay la imam right the imam if you're not so sure <laughs> or maybe the imam forgot lah eh and the imam forgot um so as a makmum and you know the imam did supposed to do two or the imam did one you go ahead and do the second one okay, you go you you intend to break away from the imam and you do go ahead and do the second one right um nah okay do you do sujud sahwi if you did to remember in the new to manina no if you remember you do not do to to manina to manina is a uh, wajib in the solat Ah, uh, tumak nina is wajib. It is compulsory, right? So if you had left tumak nina, you must redo the prayer. If you have come out of the prayer, if you have not come out of the prayer, then you must go back to that rukun and do the tumak nina for that rukun. Ah, uh, it cannot be made up by sujud sahwi. Tumak nina cannot be made up by sujud sahwi, right? So ah, uh, you you must go and do it. <laughs> you must you must go and do it. Um, tumak nina by itself is a rukun, eh? It's a rukun of the prayer. It is an obligation of the prayer. Alhamdulillah we said for today Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin rabbana anfa'na bima 'allamtana rabbi 'allimna alladhi yanfa'una rabbi faqih Rabbi faqihna faqih Allahumma salli ala Allah Rabbi rabbana anfa'na bima 'allamtana rabbi 'allimna alladhi yanfa'una rabbi faqih wa faqihna wa faqih ahlana wa qarabatil lana fi dinina ma'a ahli kutri unsa wa zakka rabbi wa faqihna wa faqum lima tartadi qawlan fi alan karama wa arzuq kulli halan da'ima wa akhlan atqiya al-ulama nuhza bil khair wa nakfa kulli shay rabbana wa aslih lana kulli shay'un wa ghir bil rida minkal 'ayn wa qdi 'ana rabbana kulli ad-dunyan qabla an tatiyana ar-rusul man wa'fir wa'sal anta akram min satar wa salat wa salat Allah ta'shir mustafa man ilayhi illa 
الحق دعانا والوفاء بكتاب في الهيل الناس الشفاء وعلى الكرام الشرفاء ونصحب ما سوى به الغر اللهم اهدنا بهدك واجعلنا من يسارع في رضا قولت ولينا وليا سوى وتجعلنا من خلف أمر وعصر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم في صبح الحمد لله رب العالمين في كل التي لعبد عند خلقه ورضى نفسه سنة عاش من كلماته يا ربنا اعترفنا بأننا اقترفنا وأننا أسرفنا على لذا أشرفنا فاتب علينا توبة توصل لكل حوبة واستلان العرات وأمن الرعات واغفر لوالدينا ربي ومولدينا والأهل والإخوان وسائر الخلان وكل ذي محبة أو جرة أو سحبة والمسلمين أجمع أمن يا ربي أسمع فضلا وجود منا لا باكتساب منا بمصطفى رسولي نحظى بكل سولي بالمصطفى رسولي نحظى بكل سولي بالمصطفى رسولي نحظى بكل سولي صلى وسلم ربي عليه عند الحبي وآله وصحبي عند رتش الصحب والحمد لله في البري وتناهي حمدا كثيرا دائم محبة نسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا على المنافع وعملا خاصم السعليم ودل الهدى ويسر بغب النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معاني من مشيخنا والزوي الحقوق علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم الفاتحة There's one question here. Um, after being enlightened by this new knowledge about salat, what do you do if you feel like your whole life the salat is possibly nullified? If you have no yaqeen as to whether your salat was nullified or not, um, then just continue continue praying as usual. Uh, whenever you can do a qada, lah. Like usually, usually for, for like in, in the dream, they do the qada in Ramadan. In Ramadan, they do a lot of qada, right? Because the, the, the fard in Ramadan is time 70. So to cover up lah for any mistakes that has been done in the past, unless you yakin, right? unless you have full yakin that you have been performing the prayer um, uh, in a way whereby it's not valid, right? and there's no khilaf with other mazhabs. So that for example, if some part you know that another mazhab says valid khilaf, then at least you fall safe, kind of that sign, but you just make sure you do it properly again. So depending on what it is, is there's, there's the problem or the issue. Right, like I had a cousin who her entire life uh, just didn't uh, do the slawat at that at, at tahiyat, the final tashahud. Just never did her slawat. Right, so it, um, for that kind of people, uh, there's no other way.